about to give up because I heard you say there's gonna be brighter days. There's gonna be brighter days. I won't stop. I'll keep my head up. No, I'm not here to stay. There's gonna be brighter days. There's gonna be brighter days. I just might bend, but I won't break. As long as I can see your face. Hello, my name is Gabriel Romero. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Stell Products. I'm really looking forward and uh, excited to talk about this new product that we have here called iDrive. iDrive is uh, basically uh, Stell's Products alternative controls, driver controls that we're going to be offering now. Uh, and I really think we hit it out of the park with this first uh, version that we came out of a head array. Uh, I look forward to going over some of the technical specifications and also standard specifications. And look forward to hearing back from you and any questions that you may have. Again, I appreciate the time that you're going to take to watch this video, and hopefully it'll uh, benefit you and help you out in any way that it can. Thank you. I'm not about to give up because I heard... The first thing I'm excited to talk about with the iDrive head control is the actual fact that you can program this unit independently. And I think this uh, uh, makes this unit very unique from any other unit that's out there. Uh, you can program a chair. You can do special types of uh, settings within a chair, but to be able to access programming the head unit, access the distance of sensor depth, uh, sensitivity within the sensor, uh, actual input controls, all these things that we're going to talk about. So I'll, I'll, I would like to, in this section right here, talk a little bit about how you can achieve that. Every iDrive head control system will come with a USB cable. We also offer a software that comes with it that you will be able to program this head control device independently from the chair. I want to talk a little bit about how you can achieve that. The first thing you do is you plug this into a laptop or a PC tablet. After that, you access the USB port within the iDrive head, head control interface, which is right here, and you just plug it in. You'll hear your computer read it, just like you normally would, or mouse, or anything like that. Hello, the first thing we're going to do is click on the iDrive head array programmer icon, which is right here, with the Stealth Boomerang logo. Now that you've clicked on that, we've actually opened up the programmer. Uh, a couple of things to mention quickly are uh, the version of software on the program, which you can always tell down here at the bottom. We're on 1.0.0.17. What's great about this software is that if there's any updates, it automatically updates itself when connected to the web. So we're constantly uh, working on improvements and trying to find better methods of uh, getting the best uh, software or, or programming parameters uh, available to our customers. So uh, I really uh, am excited the fact that it can respond as quickly as it will and, and we're not afraid to make changes if we need to uh, to improve uh, you know the process of programming our head array. Um, the first thing that is a uh, useful tool here is our help button. When you click on our help button here, you can see it lights up green. Uh, there's a uh, now a question mark on your cursor that when you click on any button within the screen now that the help button's on, it'll give you information about that section uh, if, if clicked on. So you can see here it's talking about the setup wizard, um, diagnostic mode, uh, configuration, uh, from connecting, uh, and also what the quit button does. So when you uh, click on the help button, uh, anytime you click, you click on it, it's strictly now your mouse is used for information. So it won't get you into anything, it'll only give you information. I think this is a useful tool when you're trying to learn this software at the beginning. Kind of helps you uh, walk through that. So we're going to deselect the help button. And the first thing we'll want to do is we're going to want to click connect onto our uh, head array or iDrive interface. It may be a head array, it may be uh, something else that you're working with, but we're going to hit the connect button, and now you can see your buttons go live, which they turn red, uh, signifying that now you can actually get into them. So we'll, the first thing we we'll do is get into the setup wizard. The setup wizard, why we created this was to simplify the process of uh, setting up your interface. Instead of wondering where connectors are connected at, you can actually uh, uh, since our interface allows you to uh, port select and custom uh, configure uh, where, where your uh, sensors or switches are plugged into, we thought it would be nice to create a setup wizard that allowed you to, uh, without having to pay attention where you plug in underneath, 
you just go into the setup wizard and you're able to uh, um, create whatever direction you want to. So the first thing it asks us, you know, to do is it tells us that we're in the setup wizard, and it starts to explain what uh, the ports are. So the two outer ports on either side are uh, for sensors, for power sensors, fiber optics, proximities, adjustables, uh, whatever the future may have when it comes to the sensors we're going to be creating. Uh, and the two inner ones are for mechanical switches. We include a, uh, a dongle uh, splitter that will give you now two eighth inch ports per port of uh, our, our micro USBs here. So um, it allows you to actually ha either have four directions or three directions in a reset switch or eventually multiple things from mouse clicks to environmental controls. Um, we're really excited about the fact that we can utilize that and be able to use that if we need to. Um, so you see here the next step it's asking me to do here is asking me to give it a left command. So I'm going to go ahead and give a left command here on the header and hold. And now it's gotten that command. I'm going to give a back pad command, which is, and then I'm going to give a right pad command. And now it's asking me for a mode switch. So the mode switch command, once I plug this into the port that I need to, it'll allow me now to configure my mode change. And you can see there now, now that I've uh, I've been able to. Uh, put all the, the directions on the ports that it is, and it tells me that the left command's on channel 1, the right command's on channel 5, the forward command's on channel 6, and the mode is on channel 3A. Um, all these may look a little confusing, but when you get into the configuration mode, you'll see all these channels, and uh, it puts a little bit of uh, uh, relevance to what we just did on the setup wizard. Uh, I think the setup wizard is great for people that are really uh, busy and are just plugging stuff underneath there. Maybe you have longer cables and you can't see where something's at um, or where it's plugged into. Just go into your setup wizard and quickly uh, set up your direction so a left command could be anywhere. It could be at a left knee or it could be on a right knee if that's all somebody has. Uh, or it could be at, you know, at a hand. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to really do a lot of unique things. So we're going to finish that. And now we've set up our, our iDrive. The second thing after the setup wizard that I would do is I would go into the diagnostics mode and I would test everything out, which is really nice because you can visualize, you know, all the commands that you did. So we're going to give it a left command again, uh, a forward command on the back pad. And you can see that at the very bottom on the interface, it tells you what port you're connected into, which is great. Again, the left command is on port 6. The right command is on port 1. And the forward command is on port two. So with that, you know, uh, all that information, uh, and of course we, we can't forget the mode switch here, which it shows you there, the mode switch, which allows you to uh, get in there and uh, configure that also. So this is a good uh, reference. Uh, as it says on the top, real-time diagnostics of the unit. This is also going to be a great place for you to make sure that you know, things are working fine and also, I really like this area for when you're setting up the headrest. You could actually have this uh, area turned on and get the sensors as close as you need to. Uh, so you can give uh, great activation points for the client, um, but also considering positioning. So you'll be able to get the head pads in closer if you need to and, and setting it up. So visualization is really important for us, and the fact that we can do that through our interface um, really helps out a lot and, and gives people... Uh, the ability to really configure these highly. So now that we've done that, we've, we've uh, been able to look at this. Another thing to look at on the screen is down here the system voltage. Uh, system voltage is telling you how much power you're getting to your unit from the chair, which we always want to stay above 12 volts. An average you'll see is, you know, uh, between 12.3 something or, uh, or depending if it's on a full charge, you may see it a little higher. What's great about this is that you'll know that if you're getting enough voltage, so from a troubleshooting uh, standpoint, you get it in here and it's below 10 volts, uh, the unit's not going to work, you know, because uh, it's not getting enough uh, um, volts to our unit to uh, allow it to create signals and activation points. So it's really important to stay above 12 volts and, and follow a, a, a charging method for your chair.
Um, the other thing here is you, you see something here that's not highlighted yet, but this is to calibrate double tap. And we're going to talk a little bit about this here once we get into the configuration mode. The double tap is really uh, configura uh, configurating your mode change reset, which is this, uh, the four switch that we're considering here. It could be a mechanical switch or it could be a proximity switch. We're able to calibrate uh, the time that you need to do a double hit, uh, which on uh, the, the uh, uh, quantum chairs, you, you're able to do a double hit to get into different types of modes instead of a single one. Uh, and also uh, be able to set up the time that you need on that, the time elapsed before it actually does that feature. So we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into the uh, configuration mode, which we're going to go to next. So we're in the configuration mode, and the first thing I want to point out is that you're able to see all the ports here and how they're all assigned and, and you know, configured. So uh, um, you'll see here that channel 1 uh, is a write command. You know, channel 2 is a forward command. Uh, channel 5 and 6, uh, this is uh, set up for reverse and left. Uh, so uh, it kind of gives you a layout of stuff. And if you want to change them at any time, just click on the port, click on the down arrow, and you can reconfigure them. So this gives you a, a good uh, layout of uh, how they're all configured and set up. What you also can do, and with this drop-down menu here, is you can work on the sensor sensitivity, which means that you can set the distance of the sensor, the range. Um, so if you want to bring it closer to the pad where you would rather somebody touch the pad to get activation, uh, or if you're wanting to get it at max level where somebody could just get start getting close to the pad, and it'll start to read them and activate. So this is a really nice area right here so you can get um, some, you know, highly uh, configured, um, you know, ports, selections, and also sensor sensitivity within our unit. So it's great. Uh, a couple other things to mention since we're on the screen is down here, if we click on the help button, it's going to give you some information. So you click on the sensor channels, and it kind of tells you what you can do with it, which is great. But also down here, it tell, you, you have a uh, header uh, serial number that's there, so you can always refer to that and always refer, refer back to uh, the client information that we have. Uh, in, in, uh, in here at Stealth. Also the firmware version, which is the actual software that's on the interface, not the software of the programmer, but the software on the interface. And it also tells you when these interfaces were made and when they were programmed. So this is a really nice feature right here too, just in case uh, we want to uh, add something new or let you know oh, this is the version you had, it didn't have it or not. But this is a really neat uh, feature too. It tells you the hours of usage on our unit. So you may have a, a unit that you move on to another chair, or uh, or you may put a new unit on an old chair, and a lot of the chairs have our you know keeping methods. So it tells you how many hours you put on a on a controller or, or interface of on the chair. But now we actually have one specific for ours, which is really good too for uh, people that are wanting to get information on how actively somebody's using their chair or if they're having difficulties with this. So. It'll uh, give you all this information here. But we also have a re reboot the device, which if we click on it, it tells you. Uh, so it, it, it you know, performs a soft reboot on the head array device. Uh, so this is sometimes, just in case something's act acting a little glitchy, it's electronic. So if something happens, you can just re do a soft reboot on the device without having to turn on and off the chair. And then we have a factory reset. So when we, clean, or when we uh, click on, on this, it, uh, it does a, uh, a standard reset and gets you all your ports back to the way it came from. Uh, so if you've been playing with it a lot and, you know, messing with it and you're wondering why it's acting funny, always just hit the factory reset and it'll kind of get you back to a, a starting point. Uh, and then, of course, uh, any time uh, you make a change uh, in any of these tabs, this button turns red letting you know, hey, you made a change that you need to save. And since, since we haven't made any changes to it, uh, it's, it's in the gray mode, uh, so it, it's telling you that. But we're going to make a change just to, just to have fun with this. We're going to actually uh, turn off the reverse mode, and you can see the save settings comes back on saying, hey, now that you've done that, you want to save the settings, which we'll do. And then, again, going back to the sensor sensitivity, you can do that per port. Uh, and, of course, the only ports that you can do it to are the ports that are uh, uh, sensors, which are the two outer uh, on each side. We're going to go ahead and click on the mechanical channels, 
And uh, like I uh, mentioned to you before, this is an area where you can come in here and kind of configure and set up where your modes are and and uh, and create that and, and and be able to you know put on here that hey you know I don't want any of these ports to be used. I'm doing them all through the sensors, which you would want to configure, or maybe you want to set up where it's going to be at. So you just come back in here and do that, um, which is a really nice feature. And again, so here you can make the selection that you need to for any of the ports for the mechanical switches, you know, drop downs and all that. So so of course where you would make all your changes to. Uh, any of the mechanical uh, channels uh, and again the help button will walk you through that if you need to and uh, another important thing is to show here uh, which I'm circling is the USB port that we're actually plugged into um, each iDrive uh, head control system will come with a six foot cable uh, so you can program it and of course the software uh, is working on any uh, type of uh, Windows laptop or PC it'll actually, uh, it'll actually work on a PC tablet also uh, we're working on a Bluetooth version that will work on everything Android, uh, Apple products. Uh, also, uh, it will incorporate some really nice features um, for attendant control and some stuff. So, this uh, stay tuned on our website, and we'll kind of try to give you information when that will be coming out. We're going to now talk about the double tap settings. So, the double tap settings uh, uh, give you the ability to um, set or calibrate the inputs of the mode change and our reset that will actually send a signal out to the chair. So sometimes uh, um, it, you, you need to do a double uh, click to get into a different mode or a different function uh, and the chair doesn't give you the option to really uh, to, to be able to access it easily. So we created this calibration mode that you're able to do. So um, normally the unit set on disabled uh, but since it's uh, um, already been uh, pre-programmed uh, uh, we have it on enable right now. We'll go into the diagnostics mode, and you'll see now that calibrate double tap is on red, uh, which is letting you know that it's ready to be calibrated. Uh, one thing I want to show before we actually do calibrate it is I want to show you the the settings, and we're going to change them up a little bit so you can see how it does make a change here. We're going to bring all these to uh, the middle, right around 50%. We're going to save these settings. And then we're going to come into the diagnostics mode, and we're going to do a, uh, a double click here for calibration. And you can see here that the double tap was cal calibrated successfully to let you know. But we're going to go back into configuration now, and we're going to look at how it changed the settings here. So you can see it came a little bit uh, past uh, below where it was at the 50% uh, point that we started at. And of course, the output speed went way below because I clicked it uh, fairly fast. So uh, this will show you that you can actually now calibrate this with a client, just ask, asking them to do a double click or showing them what to do. And you can also do enable it and do it manually if you want to play with it. So it's just another intuitive way of uh, programming uh, your reset mode uh, change switch. Uh, and uh, again, you know, if you hit the help button and you click on here. It'll give you a lot of information on what you need to do here to, to allow, uh, you know, to have good success with it. So, so this is our uh, our new uh, head array programmer, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, session here. And I look forward to having some future ones once we add uh, some more features to it. I thank you for taking the time uh, to watch this video, and I look forward for feedback. Uh, you can uh, check us out uh, at StealthProducts.com. Uh, there's also going to be an iDrive section there that you can go into and leave uh, feedback. And please, uh, you know, feel free to call us here at Stealth Products, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. I'm not about to give up because I heard you say there's going to be bright.